I am Lieutenant Colonel Sheku Tijan Sise. I'm the military plans and operations officer in the Peace and Security Department of the African Union Commission. My topic here is to discuss the AU's effort in the security sector reform of the Gambia. So to help me do this is my aim, which is to familiarize you, the distinguished participants on the current security sector reforms of the security institutions of the Gambia with a view to highlight the current AU's efforts there. To achieve this, I intend to discuss the mandate, the memorandum of understanding, the teams and their task, the achievement and the challenges so far with the Gambian security sector reforms. Now, the mandate of the AU is derived from the Peace and Security Council, which is uh, the organ that is responsible to mandate missions in this um, organization. It is made up of 15 member states and it is the decision-making organ on its 694th meeting held here in Addis on the 15th of June, 2017, they mandated the African Union Commission to support the efforts of the government of the Gambia in promoting peace, stability, and respect for human rights through the provision of technical expertise for the reform of its security sector, transitional justice, rule of law, and human rights systems. Now, following that communique of the Peace and Security Council, the African Union Commission and the government of the Gambia went in to sign a memorandum of understanding, which was aimed at facilitating cooperation and collaboration between the African Union Commission and the government of the Gambia and to establish the arrangements necessary for the effective cooperation between the two. Now, this MOU defines the framework for the AU technical support team to the Gambia in accordance with the decision of the 694th meeting of the AU Peace and Security Council. The MOU also governs the conditions, um, practicalities of the activities that are to be carried out by the members of the African Union Technical Support Group to the Gambia in the territory of the Gambia. Now, these teams and the attacks are in, within the Office of National Security. We have two senior uh, military officers there. You have a Brigadier General who is the Senior Defense Reform Advisor, and then there is a Colonel who is the Senior advisor on policy, focusing on operations. Both of them are tasked to support the Office of National Security Advisor with the reforms of the defense sector to improve its efficiency, accountability, and the civil oversight, as well as restructuring and the proper functioning of the Office of uh, the National Security in order to provide effective direction to the Gambian security sector. Again, there is an advisor on operations and training. He sits in the ministry in the GAF, in the Gambian Armed Forces headquarters, who is there to support the better career progression and to enhance the professionalism after the induction for a better understanding of the situation by reviewing and producing um, the Chief of Defense Staff Training Directives. 
Again, we have an advisor on personnel management and administration is there to assist the establishment of a professional personnel and administrative system with clear functional responsibilities for personnel administration of staff officers at all levels. Then we have um, a senior military advisor on civil military cooperation. He has the primary responsibility to support the full restoration of the public confidence in the Gambian Armed Forces as a professional armed forces under the democratic control and effective civilian oversight. And again, we have an advisor on policy and development plans who sits in the Ministry of Defense with the task of assisting in the restructuring and the resourcing of the Ministry of Defense to enable it better perform its oversight functions and develop policies to guide the reorganization of the Gambian Armed Forces. The team is also having a senior rule of law expert who is there to assist in reviewing the strategic plan of the Ministry of Interior with a view to develop a work plan to ensure that they, they fit into the goals of uh, the ministry. She supports um, the ministry through the senior management meetings they hold and also have meetings with the service chiefs, the police, the prisons, the intelligence and the immigration to find a way forward to collaborate in matters of rule of law. Within there also we have a human rights expert in the team who is responsible to assist in reviewing the draft structure of the National Human Rights Commission of the Gambia and its executive secretary's job description. Uh, she also looks at the framework and policies that the National Human Rights Commission needs. She works also with representatives of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission and the Constitutional Review Commission. So far, the achievement of the African Union in these security sector reforms of the security institutions of the Gambia, well, we'll start with the, the senior military advisor who sits in the Ministry of, uh, in the Office of National Security. He has supported them in the formulation and editing of the national security policy that was launched last year in 2019, as well as also drafting of the national security strategy. So now they have a policy in place and a strategy is being drafted. Again, we have the MILAD for personnel and personnel management and administration who has assisted the Gambian Armed Forces in updating their personnel management data he, is also, he has also assisted them in the provision of technical support for verification of personnel in the Directorate of Records. He has been able to assist them in establishing personnel status for infantry units, as well as you know, finding out the strength deficits in the various units. He has enabled the development of a promotion matrix format to enhance proper career management and promotion qualification criteria. Again, for the military advisor on CIMIC, he has engaged the leadership of the Gambian Armed Forces with a view to enhance the professionalism of this force and also to promote the CIMIC awareness within the Army in the promotion of the um, the, the promotion for promotion of the, the aspect that will give them the 
and understanding of the democratic control and civilian oversight of the Gambian armed forces. Again, the, the, the AU has also supported a project to raise the visibility and the profile of the Gambian armed forces by sponsoring them to create, to erect um, eight billboards at strategic locations countrywide with special messages about the new GAF in their present democratic dispensation, as well as reiterating the commitment of the army to preserve and defend the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country and to promote its national wider interest. Again, for the military advisor on operations and training, he has assisted the Gambian Armed Forces in reviewing and producing uh, the Chief of Defense Staff Operational Training Directives. And the human rights expert has assisted the, the, the National Human Rights Commission to establish and, and, and commence their operations. Again, the National Human Rights uh, the human rights expert has also assisted them in enacting, in, 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 in actually in, in providing the Human Rights Act and also advise on the provisions which require amendment to ensure the conformity of this act with the Paris principles, the UN principles on the status, and functioning of national human rights institutions. Those are the achievements so far, yet the African Union support technical team to the Gambia, of course, are facing some challenges in the area of resources in order to implement this, um, this, this, this mandate. The government of the Gambia has requested the African Union to extend the mandate for an additional one year to go beyond 2020 because the present mandate expires on the end December, the, on, on December of 2020, this current year. But then the the Gambia would want this mission to go beyond this period, to go into 2021, because it's a very important year for them when they will be holding their general elections. But then this mandate is also facing some challenges in terms of resources, in terms of personnel. The full strength of 10 personnel has not been fully deployed. We have their seven, and then of there is the aspect of financial challenges to fund this mission to go beyond 2021. With that, it brings me to the end of my presentation about the African Union um, security sector support to the government of the Gambia. I thank you.